Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Just a reminder that this podcast represents my own opinions. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your doctor or healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. Hi, everyone. I am just quick hopping in here with a little housekeeping note. I wanted to let you all know that This podcast, new episodes are going to be released every Monday morning from now on instead of Friday morning. So keep that in your head. Remind yourself you will have another one coming out on Monday mornings from now on. If you are subscribed, you will automatically get the the next episode coming to you. So it's not something you need to really remember. But maybe for those of you who are not subscribed and just pop in and out on Fridays um, to listen, just to let you know, they will now be released on Monday mornings. All right, enjoy the rest of the episode. Hello, friends, and welcome. This is the podcast, Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, and today we are talking all about habits and how they really, really can help us as our body ages. I am a big proponent of focusing on habit change and implementing new habits Um, really as the key to losing weight, to optimizing your health, and to making it last. I'm really convinced of this. After years of working with clients to lose weight and optimize their health, as well as my own personal experience with lots of restriction and over-exercising and yo-yo dieting and trying the newest diet trend um, and never really getting the results that I was satisfied with, And so we're going to talk about how that habit change uh, is is really important as we age and and to be able to lose weight and to be able to stay in maintenance for the rest of your life. We're going to talk about that today. I'm going to go through a little bit, but then get really specific towards the end as to what are exactly the healthy and nourishing habits. If you're trying to lose weight or you you want to maintain weight well into your 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, really the specific ones that, in my opinion, are probably the most important on a practical level. Now, I have things that I think are really important in regards to um, mindfulness practice, uh, our, our spiritual practices, um, things in regards to our mindset, how we think, our thought work, all those kinds of things that also really propel our health as we age. But for today, those practical tips I'm going to give are simply going to be on things like food um, and uh, eating behaviors and and those sort of things. So stay tuned uh, to get to that really practical part. I wanted to tell you about a company I recently used and that you may be interested in using as well. It is called Five Strands, five, the number, and then S-T-R-A-N-D-S, five strands. And it is a test to learn about food intolerances, environmental intolerances, and it can give you lots of really good information on how your body is currently responding to your diet. So it can identify food or environmental intolerances And then you can kind of temporarily remove these things from your diet and make lifestyle decisions around that in order to reduce inflammation, to feel a bit better. Uh, This isn't about allergy testing. This isn't the same if you were to go get allergy testing through blood. This is uh, simply about a different process they use that help to identify not allergies, but simple intolerances to foods that you currently may be eating and things in your environment. 
And then once you have that knowledge, the idea is you can go into an elimination diet and take all those things out at once versus if any of you have done an elimination diet before, when you're trying to figure out what's working for you, what's not, you know, maybe something like you take out all dairy, you have to wait four weeks to see how you respond, then you take out another thing, then you, so it's just this really long process of trying to figure those things out. This is just a really quick, simple, easy way to get that information and eliminate all those things at once. And then the idea is you do slowly add them back in once your body, um, the inflammation has calmed down, your body's ready to respond to them again. So this isn't about eliminating these foods forever and always. It's simply about taking them out for a time period to really optimize your health, maybe even lose some weight, and then um, slowly adding them back in. And the test is so easy because you just send in some strands of hair, hence the name of the company, Five Strands. You just send in some hair, you get results back within five to seven days. The other reason I, when asked, agreed to work with this company was because their customer service was so amazing. Any questions you have, um, anything like that, they are just friendly, very knowledgeable. Um, I just really, really appreciated their this to me was like old school customer service. So they're a great company. Um, and, and, and this sort of testing can just give you that idea of, okay, these are the things I'm going to try to cut out and, and we'll see, um, you know, trying to optimize feeling good, all that sort of stuff. And my own personal thing with this is I was noticing that I was having uh, just some cues and feedback going on from my body with some regular things I had been eating where I had never had those uh, negative cues and feedback before. And so I knew something was going on and that's why I got into taking this test. And what was really interesting is some things came back that I knew would come back. Like I've always known dairy. I do not do well with dairy. Um, I, I know I don't do well with eggs, things like that. But I really found some of the results fascinating. Like there were certain proteins that I was used to eating every single day that I'm highly right now currently in my lifestyle intolerant to um, and other proteins that were just fine. So that helped me adjust uh, to what I'm eating right now. Another thing that was really interesting is I always thought I was really intolerant to red wine but could was fine with all clear alcohol like vodka, um, all that kind of stuff. And Actually, according to this, uh, all clear alcohol is not good, but I'm totally cool with red wine. So things like that were really, really fascinating to me and also just helped me create sort of this elimination diet plan for about six weeks that I'll be doing and uh, just just gave me all the information in one shot. So I highly, highly recommend them if you are looking to optimize your health it's a quick and easy test to just get more information. I really do hope you give it a try. I just believe more knowledge about our bodies and how they are working is such a key in gaining that optimal health. So if you want to give them a try, you can head over to fivestrands.com. Again, it's the number five and then str com. And when you go to check out, put in my name, Heather Heinen. H-E-Y-N-E-N, -E and you're going to get a nice discount. If you are someone who gets focused on simply trying to lessen your calories or counting calories, and this is most of us, by the way, over the years, um, I've been there too, where the focus is very much on just trying to lessen calories, restricting, counting calories, taking away certain foods, uh, over-exercising in order to lose weight or stay in maintenance, or Maybe you're someone like I used to be, you follow the newest diet trend. Um, that focus on that can help us lose weight and get healthy for a short amount of time. But it is rare that these sort of methods will last long term. What's even more rare um, is that you enjoy that process, right? I mean, how miserable, I'm just thinking of the times I've been so miserable when I was restricting food or restricting uh treats that I loved um, and I was over exercising all the time just to try to be able to step on that scale every morning and have that number on a place to a place that I, I thought it needed to be to be worth anything to anyone. So restriction rules, starving, over exercising, this this is just in my 
opinion, no way to live. You know, we can kind of get and feel excited for a week or two or even a month, like doing a new plan and, you know, following the going keto or, um, you know, low carb, like following any new diet phase, even, and I have a podcast on, uh, flexible fasting. So I'm, and I'm even talking like you get on the bandwagon with intermittent fasting, but it's miserable for you. Um, that's when, you know, it's fun at first and then a week, two weeks, a month doing this, the weight does come off, but over time we cannot keep it off. And that's when the behaviors stop and things really start to backfire and weight comes back on. And then we've got that shame cycle, the guilt, you know, of like, oh, I can't believe I let this weight come back on. I let all my behaviors change. And so then there's more overeating to compensate for that shame cycle. And I talk about the shame cycle enough in this podcast, as well as self-sabotage, that if you've been listening, I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm saying here, that shame cycle, that self-sabotage cycle. Restricting does not work long-term. So the difference, um, the difference to the trendy diet following, the yo-yo dieting, the restriction, and the, maybe the over-exercising, and also the long-term solution, which becomes even more important as we age and as our bodies change, because they do. We are, no matter what age you are listening to this, our bodies change as we age, the, it's this idea of switching your mindset to really knowing and incorporating the idea of using habit change to create long-term weight loss and health. And now, if, if like I said, if you're younger and listening to this, and I know I have a heavy population of 20 to 30-year-olds that listen to this podcast, you know, if you think this doesn't apply, I'm telling you this message is so important for you as well. If you can understand this concept now in your 20s and 30s, you are so golden as you get into your 40s and beyond. And for many of you out there listening in their 40s and 50s and beyond, this message, in my opinion, is just simply a must to start to incorporate. And I know that the clients I work with, but also with me personally, is that once typically we hit our 40s, something does start to change. And specifically, I'm just going to talk to us women because we've got perimenopause and menopause kicking in. By the way, guys do uh, experience something. Males do experience something like this as well, but it's just much more pronounced in regards to hormone change and things like that with women with perimenopause and menopause. Um, I just really noticed you know, my mid forties, my body mood energy level really started to change at about age 45. It, it wasn't drastic. Um, and probably because I had some pretty healthy habits in place, but there was a definite change and it was sort of like, wow, you know, I can no longer lose those five pounds after the winter months as quickly as I used to, or at all. I found I just could no longer work out as much as I used to, which actually, has become such an important healthy thing for me because I was an over exerciser. Um, you know, I was exercising way too much and that directly influenced a lot of health issues as well as a lot of binging behaviors. And that binging was always creating w- quick weight gain for me, just where I was so uncomfortable in my clothes and things like that. So if you're in your 40s or beyond and you think that the extra weight you may have put on is just due to age or hormones and that you have no control over those things, I'm here to tell you, if you get your habits going, you will find you can cruise through this time in life fairly effortlessly in regards to your health and weight. So this is where we're going to get really specific. What are the exact habits that you can start to practice? And I always say practice because remember, building habits is a skill. And any skill, I like to use the example of riding a bike, right? So think about when you first learned to ride a bike. It takes two things to build a skill, time and practice. So you are not going to be perfect at this every day. This is using a mindset that you are willing to do the action of the habit as best you can and understanding there will be missteps along the way and that that's okay. We are looking for consistency and doable behaviors or habits that will serve us into the future as our body ages and changes. We are not looking for perfection every day with this. So some of the habits are behaviors that can create the foundation for lifelong weight maintenance, 
without the restriction mentality, without feeling restricted, without feeling miserable. So some of the things you want to think about are things like portions. So really understanding what are appropriate portions. So for example, if you don't know what one ounce of nuts looks like, you really want to educate yourself on this. Now this can be a real pain in the butt. This is not fun for many people to do. Some people will jump on board with this, but many of us are like, I do not want to weigh and measure my food. And I so get that. And so the idea is that you at least start out educating yourself. Maybe it's just a one-time thing. Just get a scale, weigh out an ounce of nuts and see what it looks like. Really get a visual on it. Uh, If you like nut butters and you have no idea or maybe you think you have an idea but you've never actually weighed out your two tablespoons of nut butter and you just eat it out of the jar by the spoonful, you might think, eh, that's about two tablespoons. And by the way, you know, two tablespoons of nut butter is around 200 calories. So if you're not measuring or weighing this, and then you have this every day, like at the end of the, and you probably all know I'm speaking for myself here. I I went through this forever. If you're having this every day as your treat, you know, you're just digging those, what you think are two tablespoons of nut butter out of the jar in the pantry. It is so easy with a food like that to be taking in 500 extra calories every day just by having two heaping tablespoons of nut butter. I mean, a tablespoon is really not very much. So actually learning what two tablespoons of nut butter looks like can really help with overconsuming. Um, now, if you really want those two heaping tablespoons of nut butter, that's fine. But understanding then how much extra energy you might be taking in. And so you might want to be, if you have a goal of weight loss or maintenance, then you might want to shift other parts of your eating during the day. This is about really getting educated on these things. Um, another thing would be a, a habit to think about is the amount of eating out versus cooking at home. And This is just the cold hard truth. The more you are in the habit of eating out, the more difficult it is to maintain your weight over time or to lose weight. Whether you order healthy meals or not when you go out, even the healthy choices at most restaurants are gonna contain a lot more energy than if you made the same meal at home where you have more control. And that's often just due to restaurants will add tons of fats to cook even very healthy meats or healthy vegetables in because it makes them taste better, right? So um, just understanding when you eat out, you are going to be taking in a lot more extra energy versus if you made the exact same thing at home. When you're at home, you just have a lot more control over the fats you're cooking with, um, the amount of extra energy that you're putting in to your meals. So okay, so does this mean you can never eat out? Not at all. It just means it's a habit you may want to consider starting to shift a little bit. If you're used to eating out every night, consider taking time to plan two meals to cook at home every week and just see how it goes for you. Often weight will automatically start to go down after a few weeks of just doing that, just two nights a week cooking at home. You might also start to find you feel better. This is often what I hear from clients who I'm coaching through these kind of behavior changes. And so it's that momentum that, oh, I am losing weight by just doing this one thing or, wow, I'm sleeping a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. That actually creates momentum that gets you into maybe cooking at home even more. And I also, the thing I hear often from my clients is I just don't have the time to plan my food, to cook, et cetera. And Um, just a little caveat here. This is often not true. I have coached many clients on how to implement tips and tricks to be able to do meal planning, preparing, um, even people with super busy schedules and home lives, lots of kids. There are easy ways to do it. But at any rate, another solution for this one um, that I often get clients to try at first is to do a meal delivery service. There's just lots of options out there for meal delivery services that are really delicious and so much more healthy than eating out and can make preparing and cooking at home so much easier, quick, fast, all those things. Um, And so that's another sort of tip, trick, whatever, that can help you start to shift into a different habit around that. 
Um, planning, right? Planning our food, planning our drink. It's another habit that will serve you over a lifetime and get you to your goal and keep you in maintenance for life. So we know that planning our food, our meals, having our healthy, nourishing food ready to go, this is also a skill that can turn into a habit and that will, again, keep your weight where you want it to be. And some people really, really hate planning. I actually have times throughout the year that I really enjoy it. This is often during the winter months when um, I don't have as much, you know, I love to be outside and do activities outside. So during the winter months, you know, that's that shifts a little bit. And so I actually kind of enjoy looking at recipes and, um, you know, doing a little bit of planning but there are times I cannot stand planning my food. I, I don't even want to be, like, I just want to eat what I want to eat during the day, what I'm feeling like in the moment. This often happens during the summer months. Um, I'm actually in that space right now as uh, spring is coming around. And, you know, I just don't, I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like planning meals or anything like that. But I, I have learned over time, I have built this skill on how to have the bare minimum planned and prepared. So even though when I don't feel like planning full meals, um, all those things, I, I've built the skill of having things pre-prepared, if you will, in my freezer, in my fridge, in my pantry to really keep things rolling smoothly for me. I, I've learned the pre-made things to buy at the grocery store and to have available. I, I know through building this skill how to throw together a really delicious nourishing meal with things that I already have in the freezer, in my pantry, etc. And you know, like I said, this has been this has taken time for me. It's been developed over years as I've tried. You know, I've misstepped. I've learned from this mis- missteps and created new habits out of those um, missteps and out of learning, out of that those experiments that support my health. And so now it's actually. I'm not saying it's always easy, but most of the time. It just takes no effort for me anymore because it's just habit. It's habit what I buy at the store. It's habit what's kept in my freezer. It's habit what's in my fridge. It's habit what's in my pantry. And now it's habit of just like, I don't really need to plan if I don't want to, but I can absolutely create a very delicious, healthy meal um, out of what I just happen to have. So that's another skill that can be built. All right, a biggie, you know, I could not do this podcast without mentioning this one, but protein, right? So, you know, do you know what four ounces of protein actually looks like or six ounces of protein? You know, most people eat way too little protein to support their body and their weight, especially as they age. And I've got lots of other podcasts, um, episodes that talk about protein and get into that. But really what this has a lot to do with is just muscle maintenance and and muscle is really important um, for metabolism and just, uh, you know, we really as we age, it's harder to build muscle and keep muscle. So, you know, we really want to hang on to as much muscle as we possibly can as we age. And so we need protein to support that. What I see many clients do is they think they're eating the amount of protein that they need to eat at each meal for their optimal weight loss goal. But when I ask them, you know, to weigh that amount um, that they're eating, it's often half of what their particular body needs. And This is often just because many people would rather eat less protein and fill up on carbs and fats. Um, Most people just have a taste preference for carbs and fats and not necessarily protein. So they often eat less protein and just believe they are eating the right amount for their body. And so most people have that you know, difficulty getting protein into their diets because they just haven't done it before. And this really is just a habit and it's a skill. It's a skill of learning how to implement enough protein for your body's needs within your meals so that you're getting what your body needs on a daily basis. It's a habit we can create with time and with practice. So taking time to learn what types of protein you most enjoy, which takes some experimenting, how to prepare it, how to plan for it, how to be able to get your protein in on the go, how to get your protein in if you're traveling. Um, all these things are skills that are, are learned and um, 
practiced over time and then they become habits to where it eventually you don't have to think about this anymore you know it's just like you know exactly what you're going to order if you're traveling or out on the road or you know what snacks to take along with you to make sure you get your protein in you know but it is a skill that takes time and practice to become a habit but they do turn into habits and then you are really set for life in maintaining your weight Another one that's really important is staying mindful, and this may include tracking what you eat for a while. So although most of us don't want to do this for life, we don't want to track, we don't want to um, really pay attention, it's a pain in our butt, it takes time, although apps these days make it a lot easier. Uh, But part of the idea of tracking for a while is really just a way to stay mindful. It's just a way to really understand what am I taking in, paying attention. Um, A lot of times just staying mindful will keep you from mindlessly eating, right? So if you're focused on staying mindful and maybe you need to use tracking for a while in order to stay mindful, it automatically for many people just curbs them from over just snacking on things, mindlessly eating. And that alone can help bring weight into a place where you want it and and keep it there. So staying mindful, practicing mindful eating, super important. Uh, Another one I just wanted to mention is strength training. I I just really believe um, all the studies I've read, the research we have right now, if, if you're going to put into practice some type of movement practice and you have a short amount of time or you maybe don't enjoy any of that, but you're willing to try something, I really, really would recommend strength training. And that might mean, um, you know, you need to, maybe that means you get a personal trainer for a bit or um, you go to some group classes in order to really learn proper movement and form and all of that. Uh, But strength training can also be done at home just with body weight, uh, all those kinds of things. You can YouTube some things. Uh, But again, that strength training portion, particularly as we age, is so important for maintaining muscle. Like like I mentioned with the protein, it gets very difficult to build more muscle as we age. And um, strength training can at least help you maintain it. And that's what you really want. That's for um, functionality as we age. Uh, You know, I think it was Peter Atia who in one of his podcasts, this is probably a while ago, but it stuck with me, but he talks about how, you know, if you want to be kicking ass at 85, like you want to be really, um, you know, able to play and enjoy your grandkids. You want to be able to be living in your own home, doing yard work, gardening. You still want to be doing your activities at 85. Then by the time you're 50, you, you really have to be optimal, right? And so um, if you're in your 30s and 40s, you've got some time to go. Now, does this mean if you're listening in your 60s and 70s that all is lost? Not at all. But the strength training portion, if you've never even done it in your 60s, 70s, you can still get into this. Just find a really good trainer or gym, people who will work with you, experts in that, so that they can show you proper form and take you through the right workout so you can Uh, get into that strength training. I guess my point is, if you're willing to do some movement, I would focus on your time and effort on the strength training part and just some daily walking versus starting to do cardio or something like this. That really, like the biggest bang for your buck is going to be that strength training as we age. And then finally, just this goes back to, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but back to the mindfulness stuff, just really paying attention to things like treats, to alcohol, to eating out. So just starting again to be really mindful of all these things, starting to pay attention, just starting to pay attention can really, really help shift you into these new habits. All these things are habits that we can work on. They are all skills. They are all a learning process that, remember, takes practice and time. So we're looking at working on consistency and not perfection. What One other little thing I just wanted to throw in, because I talked about calories, but you've heard me before talk about 
you know, maybe counting calories is not the <coughs> excuse me best way to lose weight. You know, I just always reiterate, calorie intake does matter, okay? Energy intake does matter. If we are overeating, we are taking, and if we are gaining weight or not losing weight, we are taking in too much energy for our body's needs. But focusing on calorie counting long term for most of us is not the way we want to live. Most of us would like to not have to track calories on a daily basis. We'd like to just feel free from a focus on weight and food to just enjoy food, enjoy our bodies, and have relief from that weight and food chatter that many of us have been and might still be really plagued with. So focus on what you do have control over, things like more protein at every meal. And again, this can take years to get this into a habit. That's okay. But starting today and starting to create that consistency and working on the skill to create the habit is really important. You do need time to find the, like I said, the proteins you actually enjoy and how to incorporate them easily. Um, and, And these are the types of things that are really help my clients figure out more quickly with different ideas on how to do this in a way they can actually enjoy enjoy. When you focus on building all these habits, on creating these habits, on creating these new skills so that they become habits, eventually they are habits. (laughs) And if you really think about what habits are, habits are so much easier to work with, right? Because they're automatic behaviors. You don't have to use willpower to do habits. And, And this is the goal. This is zero restriction, no more yo-yo dieting, no more food weight chatter, so we can really focus on the other values we hold in this beautiful gift of a life that we have been given. If you have a weight loss goal and or you're wanting to maintain that weight and health as you age, focus on building these healthy and nourishing habits now, no matter what age you are currently at. I hope you found something useful, and if so, As always, would you please share it with someone else you think might find it useful? It really is the best way. Um, This podcast is growing organically, and it really is because you are sharing these things with others. Any posts on social media that you can do to tag this podcast in is super helpful as well. Um, I just really, really appreciate all of you listening, sharing this space with me, and we will talk soon. I hope you are finding something useful from these episodes and this podcast. And if so, please share it with someone else in your life you feel it could benefit. This podcast is also now monetized. So if you really feel you are getting a lot from it and want to help keep it going, please go to the episode show notes. You can just scroll down from wherever you're listening. You'll see a description of the episode And then you will see it says support this podcast and then there's a link you can click on. You can click on that link and that's where you can support the podcast. Even the smallest donation like 99 cents helps to keep me producing the podcast. And to those of you who have donated, I really, really appreciate the support. I really do appreciate all of you listening and sharing the space with me. Again, just very thankful for all of you. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer, like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services. 